いい仲間を持ってるさすがはあんたの息子だな Welcome back, Tyrants. One Piece is on break this week, so I figured I'd go ahead and work on some more videos for you guys.、Um, today, we have a video that I've been wanting to do since I started the channel.、Um, I was just trying to gather enough, enough references and just content material so I can add to the video. Because、um, I kind of want this one to be a little bit more lengthy, a little bit more in depth, so I'm going to try and make it pretty well informed. So, today we're going to be talking about the one, the only, Garp the Hero, Garp the Fist, Monkey D. Garp. And the reason I'm choosing Garp for kind of the first very lengthy video I'm going to do is because Garp has so much content and pull in the One Piece world. In my personal opinion, I think Garp is one of the most well developed and critical characters to the story. I think that Garp is involved with just about every. Major lore aspect of the One Piece world. You know, you think about rocks, you think about Roger, you think about、uh, the celestial dragons, you, know, you think about the revolutionaries, you think about just the Marines in general,、uh, Shiki, Whitebeard. Think about all these huge characters, all these huge events that have happened in the One Piece world. You can find Garp somewhere tied to that. And it's more than just him being there, you know, he was involved. He was involved with just about all the major events that have changed the One Piece world for better or worse. So, what I want to do today is kind of talk about Garp's character, just how it developed, how, how we've seen him in his past,、um, how we see him now, and maybe what I predict for him in the future. Because I think Garp's going to come back in a major way. And we'll, we'll get to that towards the end of the video.、Um, it's going to kind of be in a chronological order of we're going to talk about his past a little bit. I'm going to move on to how he's currently doing the story, and then I'll move on to what I expect out of his future. I'm going to try and section the video out so that if there's a specific part you want to see, you can kind of jump around to it. However, just by nature of the video, everything's going to be connected in some way. So to get the, the full brunt of it all, you kind of got to watch the whole thing.、Um, but hopefully, it'll be entertaining and exciting. Hopefully, it's not going to be just a boring information dump, you know, of things you already know. Because I also have a lot of questions I want to pose in certain portions of Garp's history.、Um, just of questions we really don't have answers to, and questions that we might get answers to in the future. Now, the first thing I want to talk about、um, is actually before all the huge stuff. It's more in Garp's personal life. And I want to talk about kind of Garp's family,、um, and in particular, Raising Dragon. Now, we don't know who Garp's wife was. We don't know who Dragon's mom is. And it's kind of a thing in One Piece where I think the moms are somewhat removed from the story. I think in a recent interview,、um, Oda and the voice actor for Luffy, I think Oda mentioned that moms are no longer part of the story when the person begins their adventure. So, like when Luffy begins his adventure, his mom is no longer relevant. Or when Dragon. Began whatever adventure he had, his mom was no longer relevant. So I think that's kind of just a, a running thing where we won't get a lot about the moms, even though I wish we would.、Um, I think that's a huge kind of portion of, I guess, the childhood and how they grow up. And we know that、uh, Luffy didn't grow up with parents. So Luffy really didn't know any of his parents.、Um, how Dragon grew up, we're not entirely sure. But the idea that he could have had an influential mother is interesting to me. But What I really want to talk about is the relationship between、uh, Dragon and Garp. Now, Garp has been a Marine for you know, over 40 years, so I can imagine that he was a Marine before Dragon was born. And what I can see with that is that somehow, some way, and I think this is a lot of other people's speculation as well, but that somewhere along the road, Dragon saw corruption in Marines. Dragon saw evil in the Marines and the world government. And decide to rebel against them. Garp being Garp obviously probably didn't like that, but the, the thing about Garp is that he also doesn't really he doesn't harp on people's choices, or at least his family's choices, as much as he would like you to think. And I'll say that because, like, with Luffy and Ace, you know, obviously he's not happy with them being pirates, but he doesn't constantly reprimand them for being pirates. 
Um, when he sees Luffy, he's like, you know, you're a pirate. You were influenced by Shanks. But he still talks to him like, you know, he's his beloved grandson. You know, he doesn't hate them for the choices they make. And so I imagine he's the same way with Dragon. I doubt he's okay with Dragon's ideals, but I don't think he hates Dragon or, you know, disowns Dragon for directly opposing the world government. I think it's very possible that whatever Dragon went through, whatever drove him to kind of rebel against the Marines, the world government, this is what kind of gave Garp that initial push of, I have to make sure the people that I care about don't end up on the quote unquote wrong side of the world and mainly being like the pirate side the rebel side because dragon is an enemy to the world um, he's the most wanted man so at some point you can imagine garp thinking he might have to fight his own son you know he might have to take in his own son or even kill his own son because he's the most wanted criminal in the world and i think with that idea in mind garp raised ace and luffy with the idea of I never want to have to think about that. I never want to have to face a scenario in which I'm fighting, you know, the my blood, fighting my, or just fighting the people he loves. I think it's pretty unfortunate that Garp is essentially 0 for 3 as far as, you know, getting people to be on his side or be on the Marines and world government side. Um, and I think that that's got to take a toll on his mental state as Marine. You know, obviously he's still able to do what he does best, but to think that all of his loved ones are essentially going against what he stands for um, and pretty much attacking the world. And I think he handles the idea pretty well. I think he still goes about his business the way he should. And I think, you know, he, he does what he can. Obviously there are limitations to what he can and cannot do for his family in the position that he's in but he always does what he can. And at the end of the day, no matter what, he still loves all these people. He still loves Dragon, he still loves Ace, he still loves Luffy. No matter what, I don't think that's going anywhere. And that also makes me wonder about how Garp and Dragon you know, keep in contact, and if they do. Because there are certain instances where I think that they would have had to come into contact. For example, Luffy. Um, I would imagine that to some degree, Dragon, either you know drop Luffy off or there was some pass off that Dragon said you know this is my son I need you to take him or this is my son I can't take him it's possible that Dragon just left him in the village and you know Makino and Whoop Slap just picked him up but I think that there was some kind of um, trade-off there and essentially they knew that Luffy was well, we'll say Garp's grandson so they had that idea that Luffy was Garp's grandson and that, you know, they could watch over him and they'd be fine. There's also the fact that Garp knew about Dragon showing up in Logetown. And one wonders because we, we know Smoker recognized Dragon. So it's possible that Smoker made the report that Dragon was there. Um, but you, you also wonder, like, how does that report get to Garp? Um, what path does that take? Because I would imagine that there aren't some things that go to every marine for example uh, a dragon sighting i don't think that they just you know throw on a loudspeaker we saw a dragon in logetown i think they handle that with a bit of discretion just to make sure that people aren't panicking so how that gets to garp i'm not entirely sure it's very possible that just because garp is the hero of the marines and a big figure that he gets all the information uh, similar to how he did with Rayleigh being on sabondi but i'm just we're not sure so things like that make me wonder if they have at least minimal contact. And if not contact, maybe Garp's just keeping tabs on Dragon. You know, kind of just trying to figure out where he's at and just observing from afar. I think that once we get into the revolutionaries a bit more, we're going to see the family dynamic. You know, we're going to see the connection between Luffy, Dragon, and Garp. And we're going to see how that all plays out. Um, I expect there to be some kind of flashback for that. You know, I think we need some kind of dragon flashback just to understand his motivations. Because we know what he's doing, we know what he's doing it for, but there are some key catalysts that I don't think we've seen yet that I would like to see. And I think that's going to include Garp in that whole ordeal. So we'll get to that, um, I'm imagining when the big war happens, you know, when the One Piece is found and where everyone's fighting for everything. 
So now let's move on to the rocks era. And this is kind of funny because this is the newest piece of Garp information that we have, yet it's the oldest piece of his history so far. Um, with the rocks era being the era before Roger, you know, before uh, the worst generation, obviously, pretty much the earliest era of heavy pirate activity that we know of. This is the era in which Garp got the title Hero of the Marines. You know, his battle at God Valley with the Rocks Pirates. This is where the the major origin of Garp's legacy kind of came into light. And just a recap of the more well-known stuff. This is the era where Garp fought Rocks and the Rocks Pirates and ended the entire crew. You know, he fought with Roger at God Valley to save the Celestial Dragons and the Slaves. And he ended up taking down the crew and gaining that notoriety. But there are a lot of details that we still don't know about what exactly happened with God Valley. For example, we know that Garp hates Celestial Dragons. We know that he thinks they're scumbags and he wants to do as little as he can to serve them. Yet in God Valley, he was stated as protecting them. And he even goes out of his way to not tell the story of God Valley because of one of those facts, you know, that he was protecting Celestial Dragons. But you have to wonder if he already had his hatred for Celestial Dragons then. You know, could this incident have been the one that caused his hatred to blossom? It's very possible that it was there before, but it's also possible that, you know, maybe he hadn't had that ideology until now. Maybe that didn't come to light until now. And that also brings the question of why Garp in the first place? Why was Garp with the Celestial Dragons? Especially if he hated the Celestial Dragons, why was he there? Why was a Vice Admiral with the Celestial Dragons when we know that when there's any kind of attack made toward the Celestial Dragons, they send an Admiral? You know, is this the event in which they made that rule? Was it previously not something that they did? Or did that change, you know, somewhere down the road? Why not send an Admiral instead of sending a Vice Admiral? Especially if it's the Rocks Pirates. You know, you don't send vice admirals to fight the strongest people in the world. You send the admirals, you send the fleet admiral if you need to, but you don't just send a vice admiral. So in some respect, Garp either had a lot of clout already to where they were okay sending Garp in this area, or Garp was already there. And Garp had a mission that was solely for the Celestial Dragons until Rock showed up. Now they say that Garp met Roger on the island, and that makes it sound like they got there around the same time, like, you know, Garp got to God Valley, and then Roger got to God Valley. But I guess that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, just because if Rock starts attacking God Valley and the Celestial Dragons, they don't, they can't defend against that, you know? There's nothing that I can imagine any Celestial Dragon doing to stop Rocks, Whitebeard, Big Mom, Kaido, Shiki, Captain John, all these people, they're not stopping them. So Garp and Roger had to be there at least when Rocks got there. That's the only way that, that scenario kind of works out. Otherwise, the Celestial Dragons get wiped easily. Now it goes without saying that whether or not Garp already had his hatred for the Celestial Dragons, he would have fought to protect anyway because one, you have pirates. You have pirates that are trying to take over the world. Pirates that are probably hurting innocent people. And then you have slaves that have no choice but to serve the Celestial Dragons and are always in harm's way. So I say that no matter what, Garp is going to fight because he wants to take down those pirates and he wants to keep these people safe. You know, that's just not only his job, but as a moral standing character, that's what he does. He protects people. But I think with this incident and you know, running into rocks, I think Garp would have had to have learned something about the Void Sentry and the ancient weapons that maybe he didn't previously know or wasn't knowledge to the Marines, you know, of anyone below maybe Fleet Admiral. Maybe it was something only the, the girls he knew. But there was information that he learned at God Valley just because he was with rocks, just because he was with the Celestial Dragons. And obviously, there, there's a huge tie in to all these characters with, you know, the ancient goes about of the world. You know, the history that has been lost to so many is probably tied up in this God Valley incident. Um, I can't imagine there not being any hints or 
pieces of information that lead back to that time. So I think Garp learned something here that, that may have changed his viewpoint on the world. Simply put, I think this is where Garp goes through his major development as a character. I think everything we, we know about Garp, everything that Garp is, comes out of the Rocks era. Even though, you know, for most of the story, we've always thought that it was the Roger era that kind of put Garp on whatever path he's on. I think it all comes from Rocks. Garp basically ended an era here with the destruction of the crew. And I think that's a huge turning point for the world of One Piece because this crew was kind of, it was ruling over the world in a way that hadn't been seen before. And I don't think we'll see again as far as just complete domination. And I think that we're going to see attempts at that. I think Blackbeard is going to try and create the next Rocks era, but I don't think he's going to be as successful. And what's also of note is that Garp set up a lot of the Roger era in this era itself. You know, his friendship with Roger, I think probably starts budding here. The respect he's earned from other notable pirates like Whitebeard, for example, starts here. Garp's understanding of the world as it is between pirates and marines, I think really takes a different turn after this tide. And so let's move into the Roger era. Now, this era seems like the one that made Garp a staple. So, you know, Garp had a legacy. Garp was the hero in the Rocks era. But with the Roger era, he kind of made himself, you know, a worldwide name. You know, he was Garp the hero to everyone, not just the Marines that knew about God Valley, but to the people, you know, in the small villages, the kingdoms. Everywhere, Garp was known as a hero because of this era. And I think the track record speaks for itself that just how much he's done in this era. You know, obviously, he's the one who cornered Roger many times. He's the one who primarily fought against Roger, the King of the Pirates. But he's also fought against Shiki. He fought against Dunshin Zhao. I wouldn't be surprised if he at some point fought with Whitebeard or Big Mom when they were starting their crews. You know, I think he did a lot of fighting. And I think that comes from the previous era where all of these big name pirates kind of separated and made names for themselves in different ways. And then this era, we can see how much of Garp's character has become pretty uh, established because, you know, you have the idea of him fighting Roger, but him never catching Roger. You know, they fight and it seems like more often than not, it ends with a fight. You know, Garp's not defeated, Roger's not defeated, it just ends. And we don't really know how that how that works out. We know that through those interactions, Roger eventually considered Garp a friend and that you know he entrusted his son to Garp. And that moment, I think, brings up another kind of character trait of Garp in that when Roger says, take care of Ace, and Roger asks Garp to take care of his son, Garp has the understanding that Ace isn't responsible for Roger's actions, but Garp knows what would happen to Ace if they knew. So he takes him in with the understanding that, you know, this infant, this young child is about to be prosecuted for Roger, having done nothing, having barely even, you know, taken a breath for a few seconds and he's about to be executed. And I feel like this isn't highlighted enough that Garp is a truly caring individual. Yes, he's incredibly tough and, you know, he's got that kind of old grit to him, but he cares a lot about people and he cares a lot about keeping people safe and the love he has for the people that are close to him is very real. And I think that extends to his colleagues in the Marines as well. In this era, we see that Garp has a lot of Marines around him that kind of look up to him or follow his ideology or just are like-minded as him. You know, you have Aokiji, you have Saul, you have Suru, you have these marines that kind of look up to Garp. And I think this is where the division of justice in the marines kind of comes from. I think Garp is a huge reason why that separation exists. Because, you know, you have the Aokijis, you have the Fujitoras, you have the Smokers. I think they all follow the same, you know, like mindset that breaks down from Garp. 
that if you were to trace it back somewhere, you can trace it back to Garp, and that would explain why they think that way, why they feel that way, and just why they're like-minded. And then you have the other side, you know, the Akainu side, the, the Luchi side, where it's a, a lot more aggressive, it's a lot more, you know, absolute justice as far as getting things done, getting things accomplished. And I don't think anybody on the Garp side agrees with that to any degree. And I also think that this influence of Garp, it trickles down to even the, the current era. And we'll talk about it a little bit later, but you know, obviously he's he has a long lasting legacy that I don't think will ever be wiped. I think the legacy of Garp the Hero will be one that is always in the Marine's history. You know, every Marine will respect Garp the Hero. Of all the eras that Garp has, I think this one, the Raja era, is the easiest for him. The Raja era is mostly fighting, you know, he's fighting these big name pirates and that's what Garp loves to do. There isn't a lot of political, you know, background noise going on, at least not that we see. You know, we don't see a lot of ancient weapon talk, we don't see void history talk. We, we just see Garp pretty much taking on the, the big names in the pirate world and then influencing the other marines. That's a big portion of what the Roger era is. And the obvious turning point of the Roger era is Roger's execution, which is interesting because Garp isn't directly responsible for that. And I don't think Garp is directly involved with that. You know, we know that Roger turned himself in and we know that Roger and Garp met at some point while Roger was uh, you know, in prison, being held before the execution. But I don't really know how Garp felt about that. We don't know how Garp felt about that. I don't think we have any indications of what Garp was going through during that execution. In my opinion, I think it was similar to how he felt about Ace. Obviously, there was a lot more sentimental attachment to Ace, being that he helped raise him, but Roger was essentially one of Garp's best friends. And maybe he didn't consider it, you know, best friends, or maybe he, he had a different word for it, but Garp and Roger were close. So to have this close person, you know, being executed and you can't do anything about it, or you know you can't because it needs to happen for the world, I think that takes a toll on you. And I think that kind of marks the calming down of, of Garp's era, of when Garp kind of takes a backseat to everything. And not only because, you know, you lost someone close, but Roger is kind of, he's the big point of this era and he's a big point of Garp's career. So with him gone, I think Garp kind of takes his seat and pretty much just rests with that title of, you know, Hero of the Marines, Garp the Hero. So now we'll move into the present timeline, the timeline in which, you know, we've been reading the series. In this timeline, Garp isn't as active as the previous eras, obviously because by this point, a lot of things have calmed down. Um, a lot of the big names aren't moving like they used to. The the biggest people we have are Whitebeard and Rayleigh, and they aren't antagonizing the world. You know, they aren't running around looting and pillaging. They're kind of just relaxing on their own, to be honest. Garp really doesn't come into play until Luffy starts picking up traction. Now, at this point, Garp is still a vice admiral. Obviously, he doesn't want to, you know, go up the ranks, but he also still holds that title of, you know, hero of the Marines. He also still holds that legacy of being one of the greatest marines, if not the greatest marine to exist. His reputation is so great that even though he's a fairly inactive marine, he still holds about as much weight as Sengoku. You know, he still stands at the top of the marines as one of the most respected marines to date. Even the celestial dragons who are known to have a problem with him because of his attitude haven't done anything about him just because his reputation is that great. And his name is still known throughout the world. People know him on sight. They know Garp the hero when they see him step into the battlefield. So he still has this standing legacy and he's still feared, he's still respected, he is still Garp. By this point he already knows that Ace and Luffy are both, you know, pirates. And we know that he doesn't really do anything about that. And that points back to the character trait that I mentioned earlier in which he doesn't really you know, hate them for the choices that they made. He may disagree with it, but he still considers them family and loved ones. So you know, he's not actively hunting Ace, he's not actively hunting Luffy. At most, he goes to Luffy to introduce him to Kobe and Helmeppo. 
know, he goes to Luffy to check up on him. He doesn't even go there to capture him. Even when he's kind of told he has to, I think he still holds back. And what I like about seeing this now and seeing it in this, um, this saga, the Water 7 saga, is that we see Garp and the way his character is, but we don't know how it's been developed to be this character. Garp's story is pretty much told backwards, so we see we see all the stuff that makes sense from Garp, but we just don't know how it came to be until you know we learn about all of his past, and it's such a consistent piece of development that you know it makes sense that the Garp we saw in Water Seven is the same Garp that we see in the Rocks era and the Roger era. You know, there's not inconsistency with how Garp came to be this character. And naturally, when talking about this portion of Garp's history, we have to talk about Marineford War and Ace's execution, as these are the biggest tests to Garp in the entire series. You know, this war, this moment, is essentially what Garp has been dreading since he's pretty much had a family, since he's had loved ones. You know, he has to not only watch his adopted grandson be executed, but he has to watch his flesh and blood grandson try and stop it and pretty much have a high chance of getting killed along the way. And there's nothing he can do about it. Garp knows that there's nothing he can say or do to kind of get rid of the sins that Roger's done that have fallen onto Ace. And I think in a way, Garp feels incredibly responsible for that because the entire reason of Roger asking Garp to take care of his son is to avoid this, is to avoid Ace being prosecuted for Roger's sins. And that's exactly what's happening now. So it's almost like he failed Roger. And whether he considers that failure, you know, if he owes a pirate a favor, we're not entirely sure. But I think Garp has enough iron to be like, he entrusted me with you know, his son and I kind of let him down. And I think that's definitely going to take a toll on him. And the idea of Garp not doing anything, you know, Garp choosing work over family is one that's constantly contested in the fandom as far as Garp should have given up work for family. If Garp truly loved them, he would have stopped the execution. And I think there are a lot of things wrong with that argument. I think that people disregard Garp's position in the Marines and just how much weight that carries in the world. The easiest way I can think to explain it is to compare Garp to All Might from My Hero Academia. All Might is the symbol of peace. He is the one standing tower for the entire world that when he stands, everything is okay. I liken that to Garp in the sense that the world knows Garp as the hero. The world looks at Garp and sees someone who has time after time after time fought to keep the world safe, fought to keep the world at peace. When pirates look on, when marines look on, when civilians look on, they all know Garp. Garp is the symbol to civilians that, you know, everything's going to be fine when Garp shows up. Garp is the symbol to the pirates that, you know, if he shows up, you're probably going to lose. So what I think people don't think about is what happens when Garp wavers from that position. And I'll even go back to what Zoro once said about Luffy. You know, if Luffy wavers as a captain, what do the people under him do? Who do they follow? How do they react? And I think people have to think about that with Garp. With being such an influential person, not just in the Marines, but in the world, what happens if he wavers? You know, what happens when Garp the hero stops the execution of Roger's son, when he allows the demon's blood to still run rampant in this world? What happens when Garp attacks a Navy Admiral and maybe injures him, maybe kills him? He switches sides. How do people react to that? You know, how does the public feel about the person that is their hero turning side? I feel like that would cause mass panic because this is being broadcast throughout the world. Everyone's seeing this in real time. So if they see Garp attacking Ageinu, if they see Garp saving Ace, if they see Garp saving Luffy, they they start to lose faith in the Marines. They lose faith in the world government and they just lose faith in general because their symbol is no more. And Garp knows that. 
Garp knows that if he does something, it will be broadcast and it will change the world. Even Sengoku knows that, and I think that's why he's so drastic with stopping Garp from attacking Akainu, is that if something happens, that immediately, you know, causes a huge wave of backlash. The, the fact that he slams Garp's head into the ground instead of, you know, just grabbing his arm or pulling him back. The fact that he really has to try and stop Garp and just make sure he can't do anything, I think is symbol enough that they are aware of his position and they're aware of what him attacking can do to the world. And we have the feeling that this was inevitable because the position Garp was put in was never fair to begin with. You know, he has to make the choice to save his adopted grandson, protect his grandson, or send the world into panic, or betray the peace he had been fighting years to uphold. You know, and that, what, what kind of choice is that? You know, do you sacrifice the world's peace and safety for your family? I imagine the, the first thing that comes to mind is like, yes, of course, it's your family. You love them more than anyone. And that's true. I agree with that. But this isn't just a simple choice. You know, like I said, Garp's been doing this for over 40 years. You know, his life, his legacy was dedicated to keeping people safe. And, you know, it's not just a title or a name. You know, he's doing something that benefits the world. So to wear the weight on his shoulders of possibly changing that for worse, I don't think that's a decision he can easily make. I don't think he can easily say, yes, you know, I love Ace, I'm going to save him at the expense of the world having some closure of peace, at the expense of the panic that's going to cause the world. Because what does that make Garp? What does that do for Garp's character? You know, we've, we have this buildup of Garp and who he is, and to be honest, saving Ace and sending the world into panic is not in Garp's character. Garp is not going to risk the safety and peace of the world, even if it means, you know, he or his family have to suffer. He's not happy about it in the slightest, but he has a moral code and he has a duty that he wants to uphold. And if he doesn't uphold that, if he trades that in for, you know, saving Ace and saving Luffy, I think that means he's no longer Garp. I think that means he has to abandon who he is as a person. And at Garp's age, usually that more or less means death. You know, that doesn't mean, let me start my life over. That means, okay, so I'm gonna end things here. So I think maybe, maybe it wouldn't be as drastic as him dying, but him going down that path, I think it leads to the world being worse off and not just the world, but you know, focusing mainly on Garp, Luffy, and Ace. I think that entire connection just it leads down a bad road because we know that the marines won't stop we know that now that ace has been outed as dragon's son he has this target on his back he has these sins on his shoulders that can no longer be removed and another note on the the opposite side is that betraying the marines it takes away the the voice and the weight that people like kobe and aokiji and smoker um, they have in the Marines or had in the Marines in Aokiji's case. They no longer have that beacon or symbol to look up to. Imagine Kobe being in the Marines and not having Garp look after him. You know, especially after what he did with Akainu. You know, where, where does that leave him? How does he grow in the Marines? How does Smoker grow in the Marines? With Aokiji being gone, I think Garp is the closest thing that he would have to that kind of like-minded mentality. I don't think he's going to find that in a lot of other places. So I think we can see how it affects both ends. Um, you know, pirates, it affects marines, it, it affects everyone. Garp is a person who, when something happens with Garp, it affects an era. It affects the entire world. So the things that he, he decides to do, the things he decides not to do, they more often than not will have a big impact on the world. I think that's an effect of Garp. I think that's an effect of the the Monkey D clan. You know, Luffy does the same thing, and I think Dragon has the potential to do the same thing as well. They all make huge waves in the world. And as another nod to his character, we see how the effects of the war, you know, carry with him after Marineford. 
we see how he interacts with the Dan. We see how he feels when he goes back to the village and, you know, everyone's worried about Luffy. You know, by this point, he's retiring. He's just going to be a mentor now. So he's he's fully stepped down. You know, previously he was just taking a seat, but I think he's fully stepped down and he's kind of reserved to how the Marines are acting now. Clearly, he's still enough of a legacy to be chosen to escort people to Reverie and be at the Reverie. But, you know, he's obviously not as into it as he once was. I think we're slowly starting to see Garp move away from his ideals matching the Marines. And one not necessarily, you know, switching to maybe say Aokiji's side or Dragon's side. I think he's developing his own mentality that isn't exactly lined up with the Marines or the world government. And that kind of covers uh, what I feel about Garp's history and Garp's position as a character. I think we still have a lot to get from Garp. I think there's some flashbacks that we need. I think there's some more current time events that we need from Garp. And I think that we'll get those in due time. And some overall blanketed questions, you know, not particularly to an era, but just questions I have in general are, for one, how does he feel about Sabo? Because even if he didn't interact a lot with Sabo, he did at some point, you know, he, he knew of the three and I think he knew of their camaraderie and how close they were and what their dreams and ambitions were. So how does he feel about Sabo coming back into light? I also want to know, how does he feel about the upcoming war? You know, he's aware that the rocks are essentially reforming. I wouldn't put it past him to get the inkling that people are getting closer to learning more about the world. People are getting closer to the One Piece, um, getting information on the Void Century. Things are coming, especially with what Whitebeard said at the end of Marineford War, that it will happen and that they're going to fear that day. They're going to fear that war. So I feel like Garp, with his years of intuition, knows that it's coming. And I'm wondering if he's preparing for it, if he's going to be a part of that war, or if he's going to sit on the sidelines, if he's just going to watch and see what the tides of history are going to do this time. Overall, I think Garp is a fantastic character. Um, he There's just so much lore that has Garp tied to it. I think he's... I, I really don't... I really can't think of another character, you know, maybe besides even Roger, that has so many ties to the world of One Piece that has been there in so many instances where, you know, if you think about a big event in One Piece, you can tie that character to it. Garp's just been through a lot, and I think that's amazing for how well written he is and how consistent he is. You know, through all this time, Garp's been Garp, and I really want to see what we get more from him. I think there's still more to Garp that we have to get, and I think we'll see it probably in the last arc of One Piece. But yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Like I said, I've been waiting to make this one for a while now. I really hope you guys like it. Please go ahead and let me know in the comments if you did, if you disagree with anything, if you didn't like it, whatever you're feeling. You guys have a great one. Bye.